Hey guys, what's up? It's me, the Cubing Bear, and today I'm gonna be reacting to a video that CubingTube made on my average of five solves. So before we get this video underway and we get all the nitty gritty out of the way, I want you guys to go ahead and please go ahead and subscribe to CubingTube. She is an amazing cuber and does amazing content. Please go ahead and check her out. Her channel will be link will be right down below and it will be at the end of this video. So be sure to subscribe to her before we start anything off. So with that being said, let's get started with a little bit of an explanation of what we're doing here. Recently, I did an average of five up on my channel and in those average of five solves, I made them so that CubingTube could critique them and see what I can do to improve my videos. Because as we all know, I'm, uh, I'm not the best cuber, so. I want to be the best keeper. So that's where we are now. She's critiqued my videos and now we're going to check out those critiques and uh, I'm going to be writing down some notes and see what I can learn from my solve. So let's go ahead and get started with the video. One second. Okay, so here's my first solve, guys. Hmm. So I think she's going to say something about my PLL, but... Okay, so before we get into how you did cross or F2L or anything like that, I just want mm -hmm. to point out that your first solve was scrambled incorrectly. What? I'm not blaming you oh. for that. I just wanted to point that out for future critiques. When you scramble the cube, this is what it looked like. The scramble that you gave me makes the cube look like this. So you can see how there's only two green pieces other than the center piece, but the scramble that you had had an edge piece in two corner pieces. You oh. decided to do white cross, okay. but you did white cross for every solve. Mm -hmm. But the way you solved cross was like this. Mm. Which was all right, but it could have been done much faster. Honestly, I would have done yellow cross here. It is set up pretty nicely. You know, you have this, this, yellow cross, this, hmm. that. You could have done it like this. Well, well, I will eventually try to pretty be called neutral, cross. so I guess I should learn now. A pretty good pair. At least that's what I would have done. But if I were to do white cross, this is what I would have done. So I see that these two are opposites. So I would automatically put that down and bring this to the side over here. And I see this piece over here and this piece is gonna come down. So I would put that in and I would solve it. Before I put this down, I wanna bring this over because this edge isn't like great for inserting. So I just bring it over so that it comes down with this edge. Then I'll move the D layer, put it down realign the cross. Another thing I want to point out is that you did three rotations during cross and you want to try not to rotate as much as possible when doing cross. I would say if you were to rotate, rotate one time. That would be the max. But other than that, you should have zero rotations during cross. So moving on to first pair, you saw this corner and this edge and you did it in a total of 17 moves, which can be reduced. If you want to become faster at F12, I would recommend F2L? trying to solve your pairs in at least 8 moves or less. Also, try not to learn algorithms, just learn them intuitively. I'll link a video that has helped me improve my F12. So this is what you did. Whenever you saw a corner and an edge, you would take the corner and have it right here and do it R, U2, R prime, just to set it up differently. Now don't feel bad, I was doing this like not that long ago. Then you brought this over but then you move this layer at the same time like this and then you set it up like this <laughs> which is not bad I actually didn't think of doing that but just you remember try to reduce the amount of moves that you do you okay. inserted it so um <clears throat> couple things that we can uh couple things that I can say um that I have seen so far um uh, first off, uh, she is right about, um, I do a lot of rotations during my solves and I should work on not doing those anymore. And my F2L kind of sucks. Um, a 17 move F2L and there's probably longer ones in this video that it, that we haven't gone through yet, but that's a lot of moves for F2L. That's a lot of moves for F2L. So in the future, I should probably, um, look back at those solves and see, well, look back at how I'm doing these 
have two L pairs because yeah, we don't want to be doing that that much. So yeah, what she said so far right now is 100% true. I completely agree with everything so far. And I'm taking down these notes. These are pointers. These are good things for me to learn in the future. So um, I actually have a habit of doing R, U2, R prime. Because if I see a case I don't like, then I like doing that to hopefully get a better case that I know how to do. But that can be a bad thing when it becomes a habit. And I think that's what it's become now. So I should probably work on fixing that in the future. But... With that being said, let's continue. Into the back, which I would have rotated and then inserted it, but you did something pretty interesting. You brought it over. You did R, B, R, W prime, U prime, M prime. And that put that into the back. So my solution is only seven moves. Now we are going to be seeing a lot of the R, U2, R prime. It creates some bad habits during F12. So, you know, just look for the most intuitive way. That there we go with the bad habit. The way that I would have done this. At first I thought you were going to do it the way that I would, but you did a U2 and then an R prime, which kind of messed it up. I would have done an R, U prime, R prime, which actually sets it up. U oh. prime and then rotate and then insert, which actually leads to having a free oh, pair wow. that you can just insert into the back and then also this over here that you can just take out okay so your next pair you use this corner and this edge you did r u2 r prime again and then you did the u prime while moving the y d layer like that again you executed this in a similar way to the last pair but once you got over here you did this and you insert it into the back so that was two moves less compared to the first pair, which makes it 15 moves. But there That's is a better way. The easiest way to move <coughs> this is using the top layer. If we want to get this red over here, we just do a U2. That messes with the edge. So since there's nothing in this slot over here, we can bring this back, do a U2, bring it back down, and it sets it up, and then insert. Which then gives you this pretty nice next pair and then a free one your next pair was this blue orange edge and its corner back here you did this which was 16 moves but it could have been done differently it's kind of similar to the last pair you know you want to rotate on top layer because it has white on top the orange is on this side where the green side is and so the only way to move it over there is by doing a u prime but it messes up the edge once again to preserve the edge you just replace it with this and so you pair it up bring it down you actually get a free pair here which i don't know how to preserve that um then i'm gonna do a u2 rotate insert so your next pair was five moves which it was already set up you just had to insert it you did two rotations did a y2 really? then you did a u2 then a u and a y prime and then you insert it into the back so if you just rotated i could have just rotated you yeah <laughs> you could oh man the back. Okay, that sucks. OLL, I would do the same exact thing. Standard OLL. OLL. I would normally do what you do, but I'm trying to switch to a different yeah, algorithm. Yeah, I should I should learn a different which algorithm. It's a little easier to do and requires less regrips. So you did a U and then you did this. And then you prime for AUF. But I'm trying to switch to this algorithm which takes this pair out, br brings it over here, do a lefty J perm, hmm. to, to bring it back, and then insert. Hmm. Okay, so here we go on my second solve. So far what I'm learning from these solves is that um, I'm not good at F2L, and I need to significantly improve the effect of the um, uh, uh, intuition and my moves reduction for this for F2L. I think that's that's the main thing I should be working on right now. Okay, so you did white cross again and you did it in five moves and one rotation. Okay, so you had this bar here, had this piece that moved over here, and this one just moved it back. This is how you... Okay, so um, I'm looking at this right now and my solution was a little bit different, but um, I can't really recreate this, but 
what I would do different just from looking at this right here, I think because I see this green and this blue here, I think I would have just done a D2, put that in, and then I would have put that in on the green side, and then I would have done a D2, and that would have solved the cross easily. But I don't think I did that in my original solve. But, yeah, I can tell them. Maybe maybe that's what... I don't know what she's going to say right now, but looking at that now, that's probably a better way I should have done the cross, but let's go ahead and see what she says. Yeah, I didn't do the D2 move method. Which is pretty good, but I would have done it a little differently. So first off, you want to get get rid of that rotation. These are already yeah, rotation. inserted the correct way. This is checkered, so that means if I move it down, I just need a D2 to solve it. So before the yes. solve started, I would actually have held the cube like this. I would have done a D2 to checker both of these. Yeah. So then I could put this okay. one down, bring this over. So I was right. Bring it down, D2. So first pair was 14 moves and it was inserted into the wrong slot. Your first pair was this corner and this edge, and you did something pretty interesting. So you did inverse R U R prime U prime twice, which set it, it up. Together. You could have just done an L prime and inserted it, but you thought yeah, it belonged what did back I do? here. Oh, I, I put it in the back. Green. You did a U two and you inserted like that last saw. So the way I would set these up is I would, since there's nothing in the back here, I would bring this down, move this over and bring it up so that it's a pretty good setup and then insert. Your next pair was done with 13 moves and one rotation. That pair was isn't that bad. this one right here, this corner and this edge. You did this. Notice that RU2 R prime again. You set it up that way, rotated the U2, inserted it into the back. Now I would have done L, U, L prime, but you did wide R, B, wide R prime. So personally, I would have done this pair right here since it's a pretty good pair. You could just bring this up, move it there and up, and then you get a good pair. But if I were to do this one, I would bring it over here and do something like this. After that, you noticed that you put this into the wrong spot, so you took it out, did that, inserted, which I would have done that too. This next pair, you had a little trouble at recognition, which led to 25 moves and- 25 rotation. moves, guys! Oh that. my god. <laughs> all have trouble with recognition sometimes. This is the way you execute it. Recognition. Notice that R, U2, R prime. Rotate. Did a U and then realized that you needed to do a U2 and then you did another U. Here's where you had a little trouble. You did L prime U2 L. Then you realized that you did it wrong. So then you did it again. Then you rotated and you did U R U R prime U2. Then you did R U prime R prime, which set it up. Then you did that U prime and you inserted it into the back. The way that I would do it is. So I see that the blue piece is right here and the blue piece is here. And I would bring this up because it sets it up, but you need to bring this back down. So I'll do a U so that when I bring it back down, it pairs it up. Do a U, rotate, insert. Next pair was 16 moves and two rotations. You use this corner and this edge. This is how you did it. Another R, U, 2, R prime. And you set it up and then you inserted it if you're going to do it like that and you have this instead you can solve this pair like this which is a little easier to finger trick and um, I personally use it the way I would do this is I would bring this over here and to set it up I would do this so it sets it up like that you two and then insert OLL, you just needed to orient these two edges. Then you did this. Now, I don't use that OLL. I use something a little different. I use the end move, so you put the two edges on the top left. Really? U, M prime U, M, U2, M prime U, M. I don't know the algorithm that you use, so 
I don't really know if that's faster or not. You might want to test it out. You had an end term for PLL and you did a U before you did the algorithm. And this is the mirrored version of the other end perm that you did. You did it like this. And yeah, it's not a very effective I end perm. I would have done it like this. So I hate end perms. Mirrored version of what I'm trying to learn for the other one. Basically, you take this pair out, and then you do a U. Do the J perm. Which I didn't do, like, well. But instead of like doing your last U prime, just do a U2 prime and then insert the pair. And then you get a UF. Okay, solve number three. So yeah, once again, recognition cross is very bad. Um, I have the habit of an R U R prime, R U2 R prime. Let's see how solve number three works. For solve number three. You did cross in six moves and four rotations. Your cross pieces were here, rotations. here, here, and here. This was your solution. Right away, you want to get rid of all of those rotations. For this yeah. example, I actually like how yellow looks. Cross pieces are here, 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 and here. Mm. And I would have done that. Like I wonder this. if I should learn yellow cross. But if I were to do white cross, I think I would do it like this. Now I did rotate, but that was only once. Also that last edge, <laughs> you did U prime, rotated, and then did an R2, but you could have just done U prime F2. First pair for these two, and this is what you did. R U2 R prime. Now, I wouldn't have gone for this pair, I would have gone for this one, because you can just set it up like this. But if I were to do this pair, this is how I would do it. Next pair was this corner of this edge, and this is uh, how you did it. R, U, 2, R prime. So I would have done it where I brought this to the back. U2, pairs it up, bring it back, U2, rotate, insert. Your next pair was this corner in this edge, and this is how you did it. Now I wouldn't have picked that pair, I actually would have gone with this one, because you can just do this. Mm, so I'm not picking the right pairs either. But if I picked this pair, I would have did this. Your final pair was this one, and this is how you did it. And this is how I would have done it. And then you did this one. Standard Ola. Now this case is really easy. I would recommend learning it. It goes like this. So before anything, just do the U2. PLL, oh, wow. you had a LFDJ perm and you did it like this. I don't know or use that algorithm. I just would bring this over here and do this one. Hmm, a lefty J perm. I need to work on that. Fourth solve. Your cross pieces were here, 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 and here. This is how you did it. I would have done yellow cross because this is checkered. This will be checkered once it's down. And we can checker this and checker that. So this is how I would do it.
But if I were to do white cross, I think I would do it like this. Your first pair was this corner, this edge. This is how you did it. I wouldn't have gone for that pair. I would have done this corner, this edge, because I can just do this to pair it up. But if I were to do that pair, then I would bring this over, do R U R prime U prime, I think two times. And then do you rotate insert. Your next pair was this corner and this edge, and this is how you did it. So then you realize okay. that you shouldn't have done the U2, and then you did a U2 again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I inserted in the back. And it did that one back here. I would have done it like this. So I can just push this back, bring this over, up, and you get a pair. Your next pair was this corner, this edge. I don't know why you didn't just go ahead yeah. and insert this, but you went ahead and did this. So this is how you did it. How did I not like see I that before, pair? I would have just gone and inserted this, but if I were yeah. to do this, I would honestly rotate and do this. Which actually and that preserves that preserves one. This. And did no will else skip. Last pair. Whoa. This is how that could have been. That's how it could have been so much better. To do this one. I would rotate this way, do U prime, R, U prime, R prime, U2, and set up and do R, U, R prime to insert. I'm assuming you didn't know this OLL because you did wide F, R, U, R prime, U prime, wide F prime, then a U, and then F, R, U, R prime, U prime, F prime, and then I'm assuming you know this algorithm because you did it like this. Okay, so for this case, you put this on the top left, you do F, U, R, U prime, R prime, F prime, and you do U, and then F, R, U, R prime, U prime, F prime. Okay, so for PLO, I have no complaints Yeah, I don't know if all, oh yeah. I would have done, move this over here, and do your F perm, and U2, A, U, F. Thank you to the Cuban Bear for being the first person to send in solves for me to critique. If you like me to critique your solves, let me know in the comments. I might not do it right away just because it takes a lot of work to make this these videos. Because this is free coaching, just don't expect it to happen right away. The other YouTubers are being paid, so that's probably why they're doing it that quick. If I say it's going to happen in a certain amount of time, just say a week or something like that, it might take longer because it's just very difficult. But if you haven't already, go subscribe to The Keeping Bear. He has like 1.4 thousand subscribers so go subscribe to him i'll leave his link in the description so thank you guys for watching be sure to like and subscribe for more videos let me know what you want to see us in the comment section down below see you guys next time peace out peace out did you guys <laughs> um yeah so let's go ahead and um sorry my parents are playing music in the background i'm sorry about that um let's go ahead and break this down so the main thing that we learned from this um, entire thing was that we need to work on um, rotations during solves. We need to work on that end perm. I need to work on faster F2L. I have a habit of doing R U to R prime. Better recognition of colors and how they go into different places so I don't have to place pairs in the wrong spots. Uh, picking the right pairs, because sometimes pairs are right. I mean, like, we saw at the very end of that thing, there was a pair, there was a free pair, and I completely missed it. So I need to be better, better careful of that. And the biggest thing that I learned from this was rotations. I do many, many rotations in my solves, and I probably should not do that. So, um, yeah. This was very, very, very helpful and very um, sort of eye-opening. I didn't even realize that I did that many moves to do F2L pairs. I thought I was doing it so efficiently, and seeing for the seeing firsthand that I'm not just really it just really hits blows your mind a little bit. Um, with that being said, I want you to go. Um, 
I completely take these critiques to heart and I completely agree with everything that was said in this video. And I just wanna give a quick, big, big thank you to Cubing2 for critiquing myself. This was definitely a lot of work. Um, I could definitely tell by the execution. You could tell if you guys haven't told, couldn't tell. Um, she probably had like three different cubes with the same scramble so that she could continue to um, show alternate cases and then go back to the original case. And that's probably a lot of work going back to where you were. Um, I'm just thinking just from the video side from the behind the scenes side I'm just thinking about that and that was probably a lot of work so big shout out to cubing Two for critiquing all these solves um, uh, She was not able to critique my fifth solve because it was a little bit confusing in the video So that's why you only saw four solves in this video, but that's m Um, but that's more than enough uh, considering just how m much what work went into this video and I am truly grateful and I truly thank Cubing Tube. If you guys haven't already, check out Cubing Tube. Link in the description is the first link. Check her out. And uh, you know, she said in her video, if you guys want to see critiques, hit her, hit her up. Um, comment on her video. Um, she'll critique yourselves too. And um, yeah, um, I can't do free coaching for Cubing because you just saw I'm not I'm not that good so uh, maybe I'll do that if I reach sub 10 sub 10 and then I'll start doing coaching but I'm not I'm not I'm not there yet um, I will be though eventually um so yeah guys uh, so yeah that is about it for this video guys I learned quite a bit from this video and uh, yeah if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like make sure to hit the subscribe button turn on post notifications and I'll see you on the next video check out cubing tube and uh, yeah, see you on the next video. It's Cuban Brown.